Let's compare retopology from Maya and Blender. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about, first of all, what retopology is. Then I'm going to demonstrate how to do retopology in Maya. I'll demonstrate how to do retopology in Blender. And then at the end, stick around to the end because then I'm going to say which one that I prefer. Okay, maybe which one's faster, which one's uh, kind of more easier to work with. And um, But let's go ahead and kind of dive right in here. So... First off, what is retopology and why is it important? So this is my Pinterest account. I'll go ahead and just kind of leave a link below. And you can see I have it kind of divided into uh, different CG categories and one of which is edge flow. So if I click on that, I can see examples of a lot of different edge flow. Okay, so what is edge flow? And I can see that these, um, like this orange band and the teal around the eyes and the mouth um, is a, in a very particular way and you can see that it's um, all of these faces kind of have that same type of edge flow and why is that important well it's going to be important because when the model gets animated and rigged it's going to deform properly so in other words to send it down the pipeline you're going to need to have very specific topology now you may get a model that has bad topology based on whether it was a scan, maybe it came from another modeler. Um, there could be various reasons. And if I look at this one, I can see that the topology is all screwed up. So what I'm doing is I'm starting with really bad topology on both and then showing how to fix it. I'm going to go ahead and start with Maya, and then I'll go ahead and jump into Blender and kind of show that. So let's go ahead and start in here with Maya. Okay, so in Maya, I have a model, and you can see how bad the topology looks okay and now if I wanted to correct this I'm gonna go into my modeling toolkit okay which is right here and I can click on that right there and then down here I'm gonna go to quad draw before I do that I'm gonna make sure that this model is um, live so I'm gonna click on this is the magnet and by clicking on the magnet you can see that I can't select it and everything I'm gonna do is gonna be magnetized to the model I'm also going to make sure that object X is turned on for symmetry. And if I go to quadra down here, now what happens is if I click and if I do four dots, then hold down shift, it makes a polygon. And you can see that that polygon is basically linked right to the mesh. Now I just need to do two more because there was a previous two. And I can kind of go like that. And you can see how I can just kind of form this. Okay. What's neat is that after I have a point on there, I can kind of move it around like this. I can also hold down uh, control and I can put in an, an additional edge loop. Um, and let's say if I wanted to expand this out, I could hit tab and I can extend that all out. Okay, now that doesn't make much sense, but if I go like this, and if I wanted to extend this row out, I could hit tab and then I could bring that whole thing out like that and then you can see that if I bring this point close enough it's going to automatically weld okay and then I can also hold down shift and you can see that I can kind of smooth and relax okay so you could imagine that if you spent enough time doing this you could get some really nice edge flow on your character okay I'm just kind of getting started here uh, I can see that mirroring is on again because I have mirroring up here and it's a welding to it because I have my magnet right here. And then what's kind of cool on the modeling toolkit on Quadraw, if I come down here, I can see all of the keyboard shortcuts for Quadraw right here. I feel like Quadraw is actually a great tool. It's one of my favorite tools in Maya. I feel like it's very intuitive and, and friendly to use. So um, I'm really liking this um, kind of retopology method in Maya. So now let's head on over to Blender and kind of see what Blender looks like for retopology. So if I come here, I've got the exact same starting model. Uh, so I think it'll be kind of a, a fair comparison. So great, I've got this um, model on here and I'm going to go ahead and add a uh, polygon to get started. So I'm going to go shift A and I'm going to bring in a plane. And I can see that plane is right at the center of the grid. I'll press S to scale it up. I'm going to go ahead and move it out here. And I'm just going to kind of bring it up here. 
Um, and I'm going to look at it directly dead on like that. And again, it's kind of weird. Um, there we go. I'll just kind of get it like that. Maybe press S. And um, I'm getting that first polygon aligned. Okay, excellent. Now, now what? Well, I need to essentially magnetize the face like I did in the other one. Uh, so that's actually pretty easy to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my magnet, but I'll go to my settings here. I'm going to say I want to magnetize face. I want to do project individual elements and effect move. And um, I also want to make sure that this face is facing the right way. Oh, by the way, I'm going to turn on magnet. Okay, so this is going to turn on the magnet for this guy. And I don't want him to be selectable. Notice I can select him. So to make him not selectable, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go to the arrow. And then I'm going to turn off the arrow on the face, and now he's not selectable. Okay. I'm also going to turn on what's called back face culling. So if I go here to um, right here, I'm going to turn on back face culling. And what that'll do is you can see I can see the back side of the face. If I turn on back face culling, it makes the back side invisible. Okay. What's nice about that is on my one that I added, I'm not seeing the back side of the plane, so I'm making sure that I don't have it flipped the wrong way. Okay, great. Now that I have all that set up, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of come in here and um, let's take a look at this. If I hit, I'm going to go ahead and select this plane and hit tab to get it in to edit mode. And I can see it's in edit mode here. I'm going to grab a single point and if I just press G, I just moved it a little bit and you can see that because it's magnetized, it's going to be on there immediately. So I just have to move it even a millimeter. So I'm going to go like that and you can see that hey, now it's on the mesh, okay? But I can see that it's behind the mesh. Or it's not behind the mesh, it's hard to see though. So if I select the plane, I can come down here to viewport display, and I can say in front. And now I can see that it's actually in front. Okay, that's pretty cool. I could also change its material if I wanted to to see it a little bit easier. But now, now it's gonna be a lot quicker because now since I have it started, I can go to edge mode which is two is the shortcut, I could grab that, and I could press E as an extrude, and then I could press R to rotate, and again, E, and then R, E, and then R, E, and R. Okay, cool. Or I could just press G as in grab and move that, and I can see that it's staying on the mesh. Okay, that's cool. Um, I could do um, I could click here, and we can, if I want to move a point, I can just grab a single point. I could, I could press G, and I can move it anywhere. Again, it's staying on the model, and that's great. Now, you'll notice it's not doing it on the other side. If I want to do it on the other side, that's really easy. I can grab this. I can go to my wrench over here, and I can add a modifier. I'm going to go to Mirror. And you can see that it mirrored in the wrong location, but I'm going to say, hey, mirror. And I can go here, and I can say, use the face as kind of the center point. And now I can see that it's mirroring perfectly. OK, that's awesome. And now I can do this. Let's say if I wanted to kind of extrude that, you know, kind of that top edge up like I did in the other example. Well, I'm going to go back to this mode. I'm going to grab this. And now if I press E, OK, bring that up. But now what do I do? Do I go like this? And you're going to see that I'm going to have to merge that. I would have to merge that. And it'd be kind of messy. They do have a kind of a cool solution for this. Um, even if I came this way, you can see that, that I would still have to merge that. And I, I guess I could merge it. And um, you know they do have merging capabilities. And I could select the vertices. But that's going to be kind of slow. So here's what I would recommend. And this is a free add-on or free kind of uh, plug-in, if you will. So if I go here to Edit, Preferences, um, there's something called, I'm going to go to Add-ons, and I'm going to search F2. F2 is actually already installed, and it's free. So I just clicked on the check box there. And what this allows you to do is go like this. If I hit, um, if I select the vertex, like if I select this corner vertex, and press the F button, now I can just move instantly, and you can see how it, it did it like that. I don't have to worry about merging anything. OK, that's pretty cool. And now I can kind of go in there and just do that. And if I did it like on this point, you can see it, it's weird. So what you need to do 
is you need to have at least a kind of a little wall started. So I'm going to just select this, press E to extrude, and then if I go um, press 1 for vertex mode, grab this and press F, now I can go like that. And it's pretty quick, okay, like that. And you can start to see that I can really start to retopologize this fairly quickly. Um, if I have the F2 plugin add-on installed. Now, so we, we looked at kind of doing retopology in Maya, and now we can see kind of the equivalent of doing retopology in Blender. Um, and here's what, here's my take on this. I feel like, for me, I feel like it's faster. I feel like the uh, tools are more efficient in Maya. Okay, so if we're comparing just straight apples to apples, I'm going to give Maya the thumbs up on this one. However, um, if you're willing to put in a little money into um, Blender for an add-on, now everything I'm showing on Blender is absolutely free. Even when I do add-ons, they're absolutely free. However, and I'll leave a link to this below, um, I've come across this one here, Retopo Flow 3, and um, I can see that it's normally $86. Looks like it's just randomly on sale for $65. But I was looking at this, and there's kind of some demonstrations here of things that it looks like it would be significantly faster. So I think that if I were going to um, invest in this, now I haven't used this, I haven't tested it, but I, f I have heard a lot of good things about it, and it just seems like the potential on this is really intriguing. Okay, um, so this looks like something that may be um, a lot faster. And if, I've, if I was using something like this, I think I would probably consider uh, Blender. Now, even though I gave a thumbs up to Maya, I'm not saying that Maya is, I would not retopologize in Blender if it was my only option. I feel like retopologizing in Blender, even without something like this, with the retopo flow, I feel like it's definitely doable, okay? I think it's just not going to be as fast as Maya. But that being said, if um, I would not have that as a reason to purchase Maya just by itself, um, I think you could do it here. But again, I feel like if you had both programs, I feel like Maya would be my choice. So hopefully that was helpful. Make sure to leave any comments below, like and subscribe, and also share this video with anyone that you think this could help. All right, see you next time.